I'll also go as far as to really myself here on this podcast. And this clip might go viral, and I don't really care. Uh-huh. I say that once you've harmed a child, you belong underground. How's that, how's that going to Once you've harmed a child, you belong underground. It's simple as that. Okay? But to me, like, losing weight, like, massive amounts of weight is one of the hardest things to do. It's right up there with, like, getting off crack, in my opinion. I have a plan. Once I'm off probation, I can finally go out to Colorado and pick up some over-the-counter mushrooms that I know people I've spoken with who've cured. I can hear the, the comments now. Boogie, you're a horrible person. So. <laughs> I mean, that's just the, that's the average comments. That's just what the comments if, if, are. If this was a live show, to be a bunch of tomatoes. Well, don't worry. My blood pressure's going to do it anyway. Here's something I've never really confessed. I mean, it took a lot of therapy for me to be able to be in a position where I admit what I'm about to admit. And I admitted to someone privately the other day, and I think I'm ready to admit it fully publicly. I purposely... The Lol Cow Podcast. Hey everybody, welcome to Lol Cow Live. We got the boys here today, Boogie2988 and Wings Redemption for a solo show. Uh, we haven't done that in a while, right? Correct, yeah. boys? By the way, uh, I have been reading the rumors on Twitter since the last live stream, and I do want to make an announcement. I yeah. have, in fact, died. Boogie, you know why your blood pressure is so bad? I should be in a emergency room right now! Okay, I should then. be in a Emergency room yelling. right now. Then stop, stop yelling. yelling. No, no, seriously, calm down. Like you could really kill yourself right now. Let me do it. Fucking blood pressure. So I should be in a emergency room. Look, I'm I'm being on my lawn. Stop. You're gonna have a heart attack. So your face is red right now, Boogie. You should probably calm down. No. So you guys were correct. R.I.P. Boogie in chat. You know, it, the funny thing is, it is so hard to explain to people that don't have high blood pressure like us fat. Yeah, no shit. Uh, that, mm, speak like, for yourself. Like, you I, don't I like, have to, high I, blood I, I like to test yours. I got to be yeah. honest with you. I you like got, a, you got a reader around? I like to yeah. see yours. Uh, but I'm sure it's looking great. If it's less than 150, I'll be shocked. I'm um, 120 over 80. <laughs> Are you really 120 over 80? That's where I usually really? am. That, That's great. It's perfect. That is how it is until uh, it's not. Yeah, it's, I, you know, I that's figured it's going to be one day I'm going to wake up and I'm gonna, I'm just going to be fat and unhealthy. Yeah, it's not one of those <laughs> things that like... You know, it's just like, it, 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 it's not like that. It, you, you're talking like it's a light switch, but I don't think it this way. Because like I could slowly see my body degrading. Like, you know, my hip hurts mm. a little bit more. You know, you, you start to, your leg starts to give out on you and like that right yeah you start to get a little a little but pain I would, I would say for blood pressure for me it went from you know every six months going to the doctor and having just normal numbers normal numbers and then woo right through the roof it, it was not gradual for me at all at all yeah so. well what i was talking about like everybody said you should have went right to the doctor and if you if that's if you do your blood pressure i just i, I guess this is a safety thing if you do blood your blood pressure it's like 180 one night go to the hospital right away like, like it could be lights out because here's the thing. When you start having like problems with your blood pressure, like you, you physically feel you're done. Like nine times out of 10, it's, it's lights out permanently. So, but what, you know, we have it pretty regularly and I'm pretty heavily medicated on that. Shit. Actually, uh, started running today with my son. I run with him every two days now. <laughs> I'm so um, in fact, yeah, the yeah. idea of running sucks. Yeah. My knees are still good though. So, I, well, I'll, at least as far as I know, wait till, until I'll, I hurt them. <laughs> I'll tell you, you when know. it comes to my blood pressure, one of the biggest issues I face is I also have an anxiety disorder. So mine can spike pretty hard, pretty quick, like it did on the live stream. Um, that's definitely not my resting blood pressure. What is it, it now? Was, I know you're calm now. What was that's it a good now? question. It's probably going to be about 140 over 90, 160 Let me over hear 90. It. If it's 140 over 90, it's probably lower than mine. We'll mine. do it. And while, go get, do it right while we're now. taking it. Go get the it. gauge yeah. boogie. Do it on. I got it in my hands. I got it right here. I left it here last night. So. Should I do mine too? Because I forgot to take my medicine. Because like Boogie, yeah, had, let's Boogie get had yours. Yeah, let me, scared let me, let me, because he was like cherry up, red in the face while he was yelling. I'm like, dog, this m- is about to have his triple bypass right here on stream. It is fun to have let go last night and just like let myself be mad. I never do that. That's the maddest I've been in a long time. And it felt really, really good. <laughs> you got mad because somebody suggested you cut the grass. <laughs> wrong I with am cutting not. the grass, by the Look, way. Look, I'm I really cut against grass. cutting the grass. That is not a thing I want to be doing anytime soon. Uh, I, I can see that. I can, here's, here's what we need to do. We need to get you a lawnmower with an umbrella. 
<laughs> like one of those yeah. oh, big God. Husqvarna lawnmowers and have an umbrella on it. Can you can you put an air conditioner on it too? I could use that. That would be really good. Well, if you if you if you really got some big scratch, you can get a tractor with like a lawnmower attachment. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's still really high right now. Here's one sixty one over ninety nine. That's the number we're looking I at today. So. Yeah. <laughs> if we got a death pulled out there, make sure you put boogie on it toward the top. Oh yeah. Yeah yeah. Actually, yeah. I'd I mean, probably the, go higher. I'd probably you probably I mean, put me higher than wings. I've always got, I've always I, I had ten years on wings. That's the thing. I've always had some high blood pressure, but this polycythemia stuff it turns your blood to basically serve because you have so many red blood cells, right? And we're not yet at the position where oh I need God. to start giving blood. What, what, what is it? What is it, Tommy? 186 over 25. I gotta take my pills, dude. Over 25? Yeah, yeah. Dude, your oh, heart's 120, not. 125, 125. 125, okay. Yeah, 125. Hold on. I was I, like, I if it's over. Ta- I actually oh. gotta go take my pills. I'll take two. So, like, oh my God. To, to, the, to the layman that doesn't know a whole lot about blood pressure, what do the numbers actually mean? Like, what does the top and bottom number mean? I One of them is like the, the initial push, and the second one's the secondary push, I think. Um, so it's like your heart goes to thud, the thud, the thud, the thud. One of them's the thud, and the other's the th- thud. So like um, if he actually had he, like a twenty-five, that means he probably has like a block valve or something in his heart. There's definitely something not going on right because the first number is like pushing really hard, and the second number is pushing really low. Um, and I will say, I actually after my bypass surgery, you know, uh, and I lost all that initial weight, I could not stay awake, and we went into the emergency room. And my blood pressure was 80 over 40. And they're like, I don't understand how you're conscious at all right now. I'm like, oh, I don't either. Would you I, have, I don't even. Would you have ketoacidosis going on, like acidic blood? I'm, I'm not really sure. I was completely out of it. They had me on painkillers. They had me on oxys back then, dude. And uh, the recovery for that surgery, they went oxys for three weeks. Did you know? And uh, number one, number one, I do not like being altered very much. I'll do it because I need to, because of anxiety, but I won't do it for fun. And I do not understand the the enjoyment that people get from oxy or heroin. All I was was unconscious. I, what is the joy in being unconscious? At that that's point? why I don't smoke. I, like, like I have no problem with it. Do it all you want, but that's why yeah. I don't smoke it because I just fall asleep. I mean, what's what's the fun? I mean, you I have I, mean? I have my medical card. I had my medical card. I'm going to get it again at the end of March when I get off probation. Nice. Uh, but. I only ever used it like very sporadically and I only did edibles and I only used it to sleep because I hate how I feel high. I don't like it at all. It's not enjoyable. I, oh, no, I it's enjoyable, but it's enjoyable because I go to sleep. I wish I could. See, I've, I will always, say, had, I, I've always had slightly high blood pressure. I think some of it's kind of just natural. I just run high. Yeah. And then I, and top of that, I didn't take care of myself the last five years. Yeah, you, you, I, yours is scary high. That's yeah, really yeah. Well, they thought it was an adrenal gland, but it turned out not to be it. it it's probably my sleep. <laughs> you you really downplayed your heart problems. And, and you like had to have surgery and everything, right? Yeah, yeah I had a stint put in just before the you, show started. Yeah. yeah, you really, really downplayed it, man. That's not that's not a good place to be. I, I don't really particularly like talking about my health problems like youtube goofballs well good that's what we're gonna do today we're gonna talk all about tommy everybody let's get into tommy's yeah. health problems. Thinking, tommy, like, tommy what's like, it like having a micro penis like like would not <laughs> like tommy would, wouldn't like quitting smoking benefit you at this point i i, oh, I have quit quit smoking hey, jo- smoking, hey jordy yeah. wouldn't quitting wendy's chili benefit us yeah, come no, on man really come on. Yeah. No, no. right right i understand like but i'm actively trying to lose weight here i'm not Round. Oh yeah, and you're successful. Well, I, how I, many pounds are you down? I'm not smoking cigarettes. How many? That's I'm. A, I've, I've actually at a wall right now. I'm still at 398. But like that's what happens. Like I'm not doing. I, I, be, I be, That's why I've been exercising a lot lately, because I'm trying to push through a wall. And I, you know, it's like, oh, you're at a wall at like <laughs> almost 400 pounds, fat boy. Quit lying. It, it happens, dude. I remember when I first got weight loss surgery. I went from like 472 down to like 380, like in the span of like two and a half months. And then I just sat at 380, eating 400 calories yep. a day for yep. a when month. When you hit that wall, when you hit that wall, man, you know, bypass surgery did the same thing for me. And when I hit the stupid wall, man, like I, I, I sat there for like a week, two weeks, and I'm just like, you know what I want to do? You know I what they should do? They should soda. never, they should never give anybody bypass surgeries unless they've lost the hundred. They, they've shown the discipline to lose 100 pounds on their own first. They actually did make me it. do that. I was did five, really? yeah, five. 80 at my biggest, right? Yeah, but you guys um, still eat fast food. I don't, eat fast, I don't eat fast food anymore. And I still well, you know, I, here's something I've never really confessed. 
Um, and it took a lot of therapy for me to be able to be in a position where I will admit what I'm about to admit. And I admitted to someone privately the other day, and I think I'm ready to admit it fully publicly, but I purposely undid my surgery. Wow. It wasn't a conscious choice really at the time. Did you want to eat more? <laughs> well, so I, I got my surgery in part because I wanted to try to save my marriage as well as my life, right? And then I got divorced. And that divorce, publicly, we kept it you know, pretty private. Yeah, you were pretty part. civil about that whole thing. Right. B but it wasn't the most fun thing to go through a divorce. The even the best divorce, right? Yeah, it's the worst. And, and, and so... I thought to myself, I don't want to live longer. What did I do? I just bought myself more time on this earth being miserable. I'm never going to date again. I'm never going to meet anybody. I'm never going to do any of this stuff. I'm just a miserable, broken person. My career is dying. And so I literally had to work really hard to undo that surgery. I The very first thing I did was go back to regular soda. People don't know that. But it, like three worse. months, four months later, I, I went to Slim Chickens with this girl I was seeing. And she ordered a soda, and I reached right over and grabbed a, a, that soda and took a sip of it. And I was like, yep, I can get this in my body. And that's how I undid it. And I also had a friend who got bypass surgery that was kind of forced on his parents back in the late 90s, early 2000s. Well, that's and what it he, was new. He <sighs> undid it by melting strawberry and Neapolitan ice cream and drinking it. So let me because get this straight with undoing it. It's not a surgical procedure. You can just... It, Teach it yourself is. to you stuff your, your gut again. Your stomach stretches out a little bit, like it, like the shape of your stomach stretches. Oh, that's so yeah. Terrible. Like the goal of the surgery is to allow yourself to feel more full quicker, quicker, and yes. release the right hormones to make yourself feel more full quicker, so you don't want to eat less, right? So I just I I got full and I forced myself to keep eating. See, Dad, to purposely you guys undo sick. the surgery. I can't yeah, believe yeah. I do that. Oh, yeah. Please. And I would have told you at the time, I'm not doing that. I would never do that. This is just how I am. Da, 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 da. But through, you know, therapy and, 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 and taking the time to like really look back at it, I realized that I was trying to like hurt myself. I was wanting to hurt myself. You know, I just, I was in a bad place. The last thing I want to do is live longer. You guys Jordan, like you don't, I don't failures the both. Well, you're you're, like, you're yeah. looking at me in there. <laughs> I'm about to admit something that people are going to call bullshit. <laughs> I haven't undone my surgery mm -hmm. yet. I knew, but if it makes you feel any better, even though I didn't know you, not so much Boogie because I didn't know Boogie at all. But um, I, I, I felt like I knew you better by watching your clips. I knew you weren't gonna, the surgery wasn't gonna help. I yeah, figured well, you lose hundred pounds, and that was about it, and you go right back the way it was. That's why. Well, I, you know, if the surgery still, like Jordy just said, I haven't undone the surgery in regards that I'm still four hundred pounds, and I used to be five eighty seven or whatever. Mm. So at the end of the day, like the surgery did its job; it's kept me. It's Small. You. Here we are. Yeah. You. It's you and but you. You yeah. guys. But Jordy, where's your state with your surgery? Where are you at? I still can only eat like a handful of food. Like, like if I try, I can eat like a chicken tender and a half. Right. Well, you just it, eating ten times a day like me? No, I drink a lot of soda. Like I drink regular soda. Drink regular soda. soda. Like, like, soda. like, like I would. Soda's what you put drink the regular. Back like if I do drink soda, it's like. It's always like caffeine free. Yeah. I mean, I'm drinking, I'm drinking like Mountain Dew Zero right now on camera, and it's zero sugar, zero yeah, calories. Boogie, and all but like, stuff. And I'm doing it for the caffeine. Yeah. Why boogie, not that? Do Drink me a favor. That. Do me a favor, Boogie. What? Look behind yeah. you, and there's like a row of Mountain Dew bottles with different le <laughs> yeah. volumes. Of, I, of I, did, I did a video on my channel. I reviewed the Dews. I yeah, reviewed yeah, yeah. the Dews. Okay. I mean, those and those I, Mountain Dew bottles are in various levels of volume. <laughs> That's because no, I reviewed the dudes for a yeah, YouTube yeah. video. You That's a YouTube dudes. video. Like, oh, I get sponsored by Mountain Dew. No, you don't. You can't. That's a stupid You're thing back. with the EDP thing. We literally spent two hundred fifty dollars. Mike spent two hundred fifty dollars on McDonald's, and it sat in a corner for two hours while we did the sketches and the other things we were doing. Then it was time for the set down mukbang. The food was cold and disgusting. We had to take like four you or five guys, bites you, of you it you for do, the video, you but you nobody you ate any of that wait, food. Whoa, People whoa, are so whoa, stupid. Whoa, I'm not going to eat whoa, whoa. a, a four-hour-old Big whoa, Mac. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on a second. Mike Clum sent you down to do a mukbang for reals? Did he set no. the whole thing up? No, it's just all props. It's all props. But you, you didn't do the mukbang for real? No, because we had the... Like, he wanted footage of us eating a burger, so we chewed on a cold burger and spit it out. Sounds That's like my did. club didn't plan right. Because you could have went to McDonald's and be like, yo, I need, like, no, but I need like a roll of Big Mac here, things. He made an entire freaking video of you, like, being a worthless uh, a garbage can 
that that's not able to take care of himself, and then he's giving you a mukbang. I mean, he's kind of enable you in the same moment for what? Yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, uh, again, at the end of the day, they knew that we were not going to actually eat the food, right? Like he knows. I don't know. Like I see you two guys. I figure you might do it. Call me crazy. Here, you know? uh, here's my. Had, I will be here's, honest. I, I will be honest. I ate a couple of donuts, and they were very good. <laughs> Here's and I did there, eat a cold apple pie, and it was very good. Yes, yes, Jordy. Like the thing is, is like once you're labeled a, even if you're not, you're always going to be a. Like that's true. Mm. That's true. Like it's perception. So you're saying I shouldn't have sucked those. I shouldn't have sucked those in college. Is that what you're saying? No, no. I'm, try, I'm trying to say is like college. if you put Boogie next to a big thing of Big Macs, even if you can't actually mukbang, people will believe it. Like people, yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's I mean, true, it's, yeah. it's, it's not like a stretch here. It's not like conspiracy yeah. theory, right? Right. But people, will, people don't I, understand. Like when you live a sedentary lifestyle and you drink a lot of your calories and you don't do anything to take those calories off, they don't go anywhere. That's true. I, I will say the reaction to that photo just goes to prove a theory that I've had for a really long time is just how much people hate fat people. Because here's a photo of me and EDP, right? A literally a guy who literally sent pictures to a 16 year old girl. Okay. 13. 13. And a 13 I, I heard 16, but I don't know. Well, I didn't look that deeply into it. No, there was two different right. ones. Catfish, there was though, two right. different right. ones. Right. They look at that and they're like, man, that's a lot of cheeseburgers. <laughs> like that's how much you hate fat people that you're willing to look past the, 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 uh, to be, go criticize the cheeseburgers. Jesus Christ. People. You see, I thought I was Actually, looking at the worst buddy cop of like, all time. I was thinking, you know, I got, um, it's funny you talk about those, but those pictures came out. I was getting shit from my own crew. You believe it? Boogie is trying to sabotage the podcast. I'm like, no. Huh? What? What are you talking about? There's a picture of him like sitting down eating food with EDP. Now, I remember you had told me that you were, that you were doing something with him and I had to keep yeah. it. Um, yeah. Fine. So uh, I didn't even tell uh, yeah. my, I didn't even tell my producer. Right. Um, right. and then I'm like, but wait a minute, like. I know he's doing a film, and 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 he's like, yeah, he's doing a film. Mike Clum again. I'm like, so you know that, and you think there's something fishy here? Like, it's pretty obvious what he's here to do. He's gonna like light the guy up. Well, okay, that's not the I only thing you, I did. I hope I, you did anyway. Let, unless he edits let me that. prepare but, people for the documentary. Yeah, yeah. Okay, because my intent was to go there and unload on the guy. Uh, but Mike wanted to film a sketch, you know, because like in my. A lot of people get mad when I say this, but I don't really care. If you look at my documentary and you can't tell that some of it's pretty obviously staged, then you you might need to rewatch. I it, just right? like to know which parts so we can all like agree well, on it. Like know? obviously the job interview is pretty obvious. The the comedy club was a setup, obviously, right? What are the chances we were going to accidentally be filming in a comedy club and the comedian's not prepared for that? Come on. Okay. The job interview, obviously, even in the documentary, it says it's a mock interview, but it's obviously a mock interview. People are like, no, that's a very real job interview. You should have taken it more serious, right? That was a funny like, obviously, star, it was funny. And, and, and if you go watch story. literally any documentary, uh, you know, they, they they have little segments where they, they, they make it entertaining, right? Yeah. Uh, so, so it doesn't matter. Anyway. Uh, we filmed a sketch, and people probably will not like that sketch very much. And they'll probably also take it very seriously. But I don't care, because I thought it was funny as shit. I read the script, and I'm like, yep, I'm all about it. Let's film the bit. Um, and then the set-down part was is the real part. And, of course, I lit him up. I'm like, why did you do this? What the is wrong with you? I can't believe you did this shit. Um, but I also, and people are not going to like this, and I understand why, I tried to have a conversation with the guy, too. And I'm going to have see, a conversation. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Even if it's Adolf Hitler, I don't think there's anything wrong with having a conversation with the guy. You right, know, the, yeah. The documentary's yeah. about him. What are you going to do? I mean, that doesn't make I, any sense to me. Like, like you're uh, uh, a kid toucher because you talk to a guy who's a kid. I don't get that. Like, it's like, what, what, so the reporters, like, what, it, the reporter did an interview with him? I don't know. It doesn't make any sense to me. Right. And at the end of the day, I, I don't prepare people for this documentary. And Mike, of course, when you hear this, Mike, I'm sorry, buddy. But you shouldn't have leaked those photos if you want me to keep quiet, right? Well, EDP uh, leaked no. them, right? Right, but he shouldn't have sent them the EDP, right? Like, you know what EDP is going to do with them. He's going to leak them, right? Like, of course. So um, at the end of the day, I if you watch my documentary, how did that make me look, y'all? Did it humanize me? Did it make me look good? Did it make me look like a great person? Or yeah, did it I'm call me on all of my shit? Yeah. I'm starting to think he's f with you. I gotta be honest with you. I, I like it, it. I'm sorry. It's a little too much of a coincidence for me. Yeah, you I, know, it make me a little hesitant. You know, I'm, in the future. 
I mean, you know, honestly, I needed the money. I was young and I needed the money. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you told me, you told me that, that he was going to hire you and you told yeah. me, um, you, you told me what was going on and, and to keep quiet. Yeah. And, 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 and so when I saw this and well, the first thing I read, just because you sat across the street uh, and, and, and cause people were saying like, why did you have to have dinner with him? Well, he's like, they're doing a movie. Yeah, it's not dinner. It's a stage set. Yeah, it's a yeah set. like you're doing a movie. I mean, yeah, yeah. like who we didn't. Came, we like, didn't. Who, who cares? Like, where where's the more appropriate place to do it to make? Um, yeah, <laughs> I, boogie not a creep. You know, <laughs> I, I couldn't get the hell out of there quick enough. Honestly, yeah. Yeah, Howard like, Stern used to talk to a guy from Nambla. You know, like like the, the speaking part. Like, if you look, if there's any video you saying, yeah, I think I can understand where you're coming from there. I think you might be in a little trouble. <laughs> I got to be honest with you. But if you're lecturing him. I, I will also go. I'll also go as far as really myself here on this podcast. And this clip might go viral, and I don't really care. Okay. I say that once you've harmed a child, you belong underground. Hundred percent. Once you've harmed <laughs> a child, that, you belong underground. It's simple as that. Okay. But if you've not harmed a child, all I want for you is to stop doing what you're doing and get better. That's it. I don't it, know. I don't, right. I, don't think. I think that if you are inclined to do it. What I want for you is not necessarily is to be that, put on the ground. I want you, you to got. never f do it and get f better. Dude, that's well, what I want. Can they come over for your you. house and whip their out and rock around your house? Dude, like, <laughs> like you can't, you can't give these people, you can't get, let these motherfuckers have hope. Because, like, here's the thing, man. He lost his no YouTube hope. channel. He lost, mm. he lost his home. He lost like he two or paid. three cars. He lost all these guns. He, he, he and all this. Sh and then he does it again. Right, yeah, and then he does it again. Oh, yeah, like that right there tells you that he's had success on it, and he's going to continue to do it. So why even go with that hope? Shit? Right, you you got to look at him. What he is, he's he's a terminally ill, lonely dude that wants female he's attention. A threat to children. Yeah, he's a threat to children. He wants female I, attention. No I'll also go as far as to say. I'll also go as far as to say that you might think I'm a dumb motherfucker, and I am. But his IQ has some serious issues. He is not, I've never, I, he I've is never not actually good. talked to this guy, but you said on the live show that he was doing well for himself and you wouldn't elaborate on it. It's just he's got work, but I don't want to send somebody at his work attacking him and stuff. You right, know? right. But, but does, oh, yeah. does he, right? Like, he like, has a job. You know, Mama Max. He has a job. Yeah, he's got a job. Okay. And it probably pays more than this podcast does. I can tell you that. I wonder, I, I, wonder, I, wonder if, uh, I wonder how Mama Max didn't catch up with him. <laughs> You know, because Mama Max was never actually about. Oh, because Mama Max didn't yeah, actually no. <laughs> give a. Sh Mama Max is a f scammer. Yeah, I know. The whole thing was a big scam. It's like, yeah, it's well, a, like I look at a, most of these like channels. Like, um, was that Ross guy? Was his name? What the guy who caught EDP the first time? I oh, I, I don't, don't remember. Know. Yeah, There's regardless, all I, of them: Skeeter, Jean, Skeeter, Hanson. The all of them suck. Like all the channels are boring they never actually get anything done and all they're really doing is like meeting dudes in, in like walgreens and just yelling at them it's like the same yep. over and over and over again like and i will and i will say okay so i've read some conflicting things about edp i've heard some people saying that they really had to bait him and really had to work at it and really had to worry him down and all this other shit. but at the end of the day uh, he did the thing, right? And yeah, you, yeah, right. You, yeah, you're yeah, right. Yeah. You, you, you broke yeah, the he crime, was entrapped, right? But but it wasn't like the police, you know. Right. That just means he. That just means he shouldn't, you know. Like if he's entrapped by the police, it just means like legally he should get off. But right? these, but it but doesn't these, make him any less of a threat, right? You know? <laughs> but these people that entrapped him, they yeah. basically uh, gave him a license to be able to walk around the rest of his life without ever getting caught, right? Like at the yeah. end of the day, because they botched it so poorly. Yeah. Um. The the police will never touch it. The FBI will never touch it because you botched it so poorly. That's Instead not of true, actually Boogie. having no, I hold on, so. hold on. This is this is my theory. You tell me I'm wrong when okay, I'm done. Okay. okay? okay but enough. I think because you made it YouTube comment, I have been told that they will not touch it because don't they don't know how much of it's real, how much of it's not real. They're going to wait for the next sting. And I've heard that that's why Chris Henson does it the way that he does, that the that they make sure it's all processed, the guy's in jail, the guy's been had his court date. That's when you get to see it on the TV, okay? If yeah. they did it beforehand, it could jeopardize that court the case. Investigation of the case or something like right. that. Right. And so yeah, because and these Hansen's, people... Chris Hansen's made his you know, fair share of screw-ups too. Right. Now, he's not exactly 100%. Uh, but if you ever wanted EDP behind bars, you need to be mad at the people that entrapped him and did it so poorly that it's not actionable. Yeah, because it's for views. It's not it, for and here, little and here's why you're wrong. kids or here's protecting why you're wrong, children. Boogie. Go ahead. 
the re- the reason you're wrong is he's going to fall again. Like EDP is going to get hit again because like if he's been hit twice when he's in the public eye. You don't think five years from now somebody's going to message him and he's going to fall for oh, it? Oh, I can promise you. I can promise him nothing's going to happen in five years because that he won't be here in five years. That dude's getting uh, his his health. Is, oh, you're right. He has he's on dialysis, health. right? Yeah. yeah, three days a week, man. Like I, he's yeah, like a beer in five years. Long. You know, it's funny, like everybody tells us to get Cyrax on, which would probably be next to impossible. But um, I did, I, I don't really, I, like, a lot of our fans are about the, the, this particular topic that just keeps coming up. And, and it, probably because of views, you know, I'm not going to sit there and lie to anybody. But I, I did see something. I guess Cyrax got set up, right? Mm-hmm. And he, he got set up twice. This is why it relates to what Wings is saying, by the same person, Right. And they asked him, "Is like, when was the last time you talked to an underage um, uh, girl?" He said, um, "He goes before. <laughs> you mean before? <laughs> I'm sorry." He says, "It's the last time you called me. Um, never." <laughs> you know? so, wow. <laughs> yeah. So it was. I'm. I'm I don't get the exact thing, but he says, yeah, yeah. Like, I, last time I talked, okay, yeah, there was you, and there was you. <laughs> so It's so funny, and that guy is definitely probably a danger to kids, too. But, Speaking uh, of Cyrix, I'm yeah. trying to find this thing, because, like, this man is mentally ill. First of all, he'd hang up in the first five minutes with me. I'm sorry. You call it Lil Cow Podcast, Lil Cow Live. Guess what? The Lil Cow's like, I'm on a Lil Cow and going on there. Look at EDP. I mean, you know, <laughs> one, one, of the, one of the biggest complaints I had with the whole EDP thing is like, you're platforming a predator, you're platforming a predator. No, I ain't platforming anybody. TikTok's platforming somebody right now. They're, they're pla- uh, uh, Instagram's platforming people. So no, you can't get mad at me. And it, it, Mike Klum's shooting a documentary with him is, okay, get mad at Mike Klum. I just appeared in the f-ing thing, right? Um, yeah. I don't. I had no intention of promoting it, tweeting about it. I don't think there's anything wrong. I don't think there's anything right? wrong with doing a like, like doing a uh, documentary on this creep. I don't think there's anything no. wrong with that. And you I know, also like, say, I, I put shine put a light creep- on these guys. That's what I'm about. Don't let them hide in the yes, shadows. Put creeps you know? on this podcast. I would love if this podcast oh, yeah, yeah, became you know. exposing creeps. Let's do it because we have a very invigorated audience. They very much do not like creeps. Creeps. We three are not even that creepy. I'm the creepiest among us, and I ain't even that creepy. Right. Yeah. So if we can get actual monsters, actual predators, actual garbage human beings on this uh, podcast, so they are in the 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 targeting hairs of of this audience, then the, some real good could happen, right? Imagine no, Wings 007 oh, God, goes honest. after we, a we, bad we, we person. Like, I'm not going to sit there and lie to anybody. We're, we're doing it for views. Don't act. I like mean, we're yeah, that's. I mean, that's. Hero. Yeah, that's you the know? primary goal. I'm talking about the side effect. I would like to get rich. <laughs> Oh, you mean I would like to get rich. Not real that we can take credit for. What is this, the yeah. Mama Max podcast? But it would, be, it would be cool if we could get like Wings 007 to go after actual p- Wouldn't that be neat? That'd be neat. That'd we be neat. take all his time away from all those funny videos he makes about Wings. I mean, <laughs> thanks for screwing that up, Wings. <laughs> <laughs> you actually enjoyed those videos? I, I don't see. I don't know. They're all, all the videos are kind of uh, they I, all, they I watched, all like a collage. Um, yeah, to me, they are. So I'm sure you made one funny one. The ones I watch, I watch Breaking Banquet, and I watch um, the Hoodlum guy, Lummox, the hired Hoodlum. Lummox. Yeah, you know, like I've, yeah. I, I, I've, I don't know if I ever watched um, 007. I just assume I did. Yeah, I haven't watched any of that, but you know who I do watch is I see a lot of DSP clips on my Twitter feed, mm-hmm. so and boring. it's just so fun. But really? it's always the same thing over and over again. But it is, it's just every time I watch Phil talk. It makes me cringe so bad, like way more than Seinfeld or Curb Your Enthusiasm ever could. It just makes my asshole turn inside out. Can you it's- imagine, like for the 50th time, right? Like, all right, like you guys, I don't know Wing so much, but, well, no, yeah, you guys have been accused of e-begging. Mm-hmm. But he's just like, he doesn't do he doesn't do anything like cover it up. And it's always the same no. stuff. And he lectures his audience like they're a hockey team. You guys got to get more on the four check and our power play's got to get better. And it's like, look, you know, I, I, I put the sweater on and, um, you know, like only a hundred dollars. Like what's going on? Am I doing something wrong? Is there like, like who are you to talk to I was about to like ask, that? did you, you see his Final kid? Fantasy seven breakdowns? <laughs> no, I didn't. Because the did new you? Final Fantasy seven game back came out and Phil had this stupid like wig that he was supposed to be like Cloud, which is like oh, the main no. character of the game. Yesterday, I don't know what happened. So on launch day, right? Support was incredibly slow. And I was like, wow, so this is kind of disheartening. Should I keep playing Final Fantasy VII as much as I said I was going to, or should I cut back on it? Yesterday, 
It was literally the opposite. It was people came out in droves to support and it was tips. It was super chats. Like it was a great day. Yes, I wore the Cloud Strife wig yesterday. And yes, we will continue with this. If we hit the tier two goal of hundred bucks, I will put on the Cloud Strife wig again today. Okay. So you got to see me. And as you see, we have two new emotes in the chat. And All right, I'm not putting on the wig. Yeah, he didn't He didn't want to put the wig on because it was like a $100 like, push goal. I didn't even see it. I knew it. <laughs> but he only made like $55. And like it's been but doing like, terribly for his channel. See, I watch wigs because he always said something funny. All right. Like, 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 whether he was, um, like, uh, like, like, welcome to band world. That was funny to me. I was saying that to my friends for months. A band star destroyer 24, dude. I don't suck at World War II either. Shock Steve. All right. Shock Steve. Here it is. I'm going to download Fortnite, Shock Steve. If I don't reach 520 subscribers within two hours, I'm perma banning you. Ban, ban any variation of laughter in the chat. Ban that guy right there. Try, trying to make fun of my f***ing KD. F*** you, dude. You come do this sh New rule. Anybody that says League of Legends in any context in my chat is perma banned. Come with consistent streams. F*** you, Kiesel. Get banned. I uh, Lucky Series 7. Welcome to Ban World. If you're never gonna donate, get the f*** out of here. What the, f what the f*** you want me to do, man? I had two teammates. I had one who was 0 and 15. Another was 2 and 16. How the f*** am not blaming teammates? You, Wager King. Get the f*** out of my chat get somebody ban him uh ban anybody that knows what i said keep banning ban more with we, it's always the same thing with dsp it's the same like is it really funny in 2016 that he's about not getting donations that was funny in 2016. my my, my yeah, big like, thing with phil is it's more of a curiosity than anything else because this man clears a hundred grand a year doing what he and does he like with like 300 and, and all that stupid WWE and like game. I don't understand. Like he lives in a state that doesn't have like a state federal income tax. He makes a hundred plus thousand dollars a year. His wife works. They have one car, and he doesn't. In the state he lives in, isn't particularly a high a like grand. income state. Like like it's not a state where like oh this is a, it's not Silicon Valley is what I'm trying to say. Right? It's not yeah. you got to make thousands of dollars just to exist. I think they have high taxes over there. To be honest, he's in Seattle, right? Uh, he's in the state of is Washington. He, I, don't I don't know where he is in the state. He's in the Antifa state. I taxes. <laughs> but regardless, it's like you should be doing well. Like if you, if I made Phil's money, I would be driving a brand new Ford Raptor. And you would have gave it to some other girl to blow on her kid. I gave it. I'm I, I definitely would have. I definitely would have. Boogie, what is the most expensive item you've ever bought? Besides. A for, myself? <laughs> for myself? For myself? For yourself? $21,000 Toyota Corolla? That doesn't count. Well, that's a real. That doesn't count. That's like a real purchase, though. I'm, I'm know, talking about like something stupid that you won't actually benefit your yeah, life. Something dumb. Quarter million dollar house. Some stupid. That, uh, look, thousand dollar gaming PC or Xbox, PlayStation. That, but that's, uh, that's two, worth two thousand, thousand, two thousand, two thousand dollar television. Two thousand dollar television. I mean, like, two thousand dollar television. I, mean, I got my PC costs twenty eight hundred dollars, boogie, and I don't consider oh, that a splurge. It was for business. I mean, Magic the Gathering, I, I oh, ooh, here's one. I spent $1,800, in my mind, I considered it an investment. I spent $1,800 on a case of Double Masters. What is a Double Master? So that was probably super, super, it's a It's a Magic the Gathering collectible set. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty yeah. stupid. Yeah. Okay, like, no, how, how was it an investment? Oh, every, every stupid thing I ever bought is behind me. I, I went through a midlife crisis and bought a bunch of arcades, but they weren't real arcades anyway, so. Oh. And you got them. You got yours for free. I'm so jealous of you. You know. Yeah, I still. I wish I still had a, a good. Do you still have the Xbox? Because they've some pretty good stuff. Yeah. Which Xbox? I have so many Xboxes. Did, I thought Xbox sent you a, like a custom one, like with your name on it. Uh, yeah, I still have that. And the coolest one I have is this Cuphead one behind me. This one I think is super rare. If I ever get around to actually selling it, but it's got like Cuphead painted on the front. It had a Cuphead controller. I used the Cuphead controller. I probably really shouldn't. Uh, it should be in here on the shelf. But uh, this Xbox, I think there's, someone said there's like 100 of them. It's an Xbox Series, Xbox One S. So I think this will probably go for a pretty penny. There's a content creator by the name of Retro Rick. And uh, he's been wanting to collaborate with me for a long time. Not because Retro uh, Rick or Retro Ralph? Retro Rick. And at some point, I'm just going to take everything I own. Mm-hmm. And uh, all this gaming stuff that I don't use and just take it to Rick and let him sell it for me and like sell it to him and let him make a profit off of me because he's just a good man. He, he, We're talking one about time, Arkansas, I'm going to blow up right? Rick. 
Conway, Arkansas. If you guys don't know about Retro Rick, he is one of the nicest YouTubers I've ever met. And Connor, feel free to cut this if you think people won't like it. But one time I went to a convention with him. We had like a creator dinner afterwards. And there was like 18 people there. And I, I wanted to leave early because my social battery was running low. So I called over the waitress and I'm like, hey, can I pay for my meal? And she leans over and she's like, oh, it's already been taken care of, sir. And we're all looking around. I'm like, do you guys know somebody paid for dinner? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, who did that? Nobody would volunteer, right? So five minutes later, that waitress kneels down next to Rick and is like, uh, so sir, since you spent like $500, we wanted to give you this gift certificate. So if you guys want to come back later and he goes, no, 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 shh, 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 shh. that dude was so kind. He bought like 20 people dinner. He bought 20 people dinner I, I, for $500. Just, I thought you were going to say she blew I, him or something. I don't know how much Jesus. it was. It might've been 2000. I'm just making I, 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 I was 2000 yeah. makes more sense, but I'm like, whew. yeah. Cause like I was, yeah, I was thinking was, like, was, what's the most expensive dinner I ever bought? And mine was like $240. I mean, it wasn't like it's Roos Chris here, you know. <laughs> we're, not, we're not eating like a fancy five-star place. It was like some German place, you know. Probably 20, 20 to $40 per person. But still, it doesn't matter. I mean, who does that? I've never done that. I've had real money, you know. I've had like real, real money, and Shoot. I've never wanted to do My that. My very first YouTube paycheck was like $21,000. And I took... Your very first one? My very first one. Because, well, let me, let, wow. me, let me give some context. Machinima had to back pay us three months. All, so it was literally three months worth of paychecks that were like seven thousand dollars a month. So it was like twenty one thousand dollars they paid me on my very first like YouTube paycheck, and I took my entire family out to Yamato's, which is like this Japanese abachi steakhouse, and I paid for everybody. It was like two hundred and fifty. How much was it? It was like two hundred fifty dollars. That's not bad. That's not bad. That's not, for, for a big check like that. Yeah. Sorry. And it was like it was yeah. like I think that's the most expensive bucks? dinner I've ever bought. Two hundred fifty bucks. That's not that bad. I, I think I've spent more than that. I know, but only special occasions for family and stuff like that. You know, I, on my sec, on my first time around when I was making money off the internet, um, I bought all the people that had given me food back when I was homeless. I bought them dinner all the time, right? Let's go out eat at the buffet. Let's go out eat this. Lit. So, but you know, a, a, after I ran out of you or internet money the first time, those people stopped buying me. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I thought we were just in this like yeah, because you're not worth helping. You're not getting juiced right. anymore. <laughs> and, and so this this second time through. Uh, the people that stuck with me, like, you know, my roommate, I kept buying them. Shit. I'll buy them until the end of time. But I was way more careful the second time. And I have a fun story. One time I went to L.A. with Kid Behind a Camera, McJuggernuggets, and Lance Stewart. And we're all hanging out. Yeah. And we all go to like five, six different dinners, right? And the way it's normally done in, in that circle is somebody bays for the whole dinner. And then, you know, somebody picks up the next one. Somebody else picks up the next one. And, of course, this is when I'm starting to go broke, right, 2019. And so, like, the first place we eat is like this cheap little dive uh, overnight place, you know, diner. And I'm like, I reach for the, the check. Jesse gets it before I do. I'm like, all right, well, I'll get the next one. Jesse's the next a place, millionaire. He can handle it. Right. So, <laughs> yeah. so the next one, we eat in a much more expensive place, and I'm like reluctant to grab it, but I'm like, it might get more expensive, it might get less. Hopefully, I'll get the next one. Michael grabs that one, okay? So then mm -hmm. we go somewhere else, and I'm like, oh, this is the one. This is affordable. I got this one. Lance Stewart pays for it by getting up and paying for it without telling anybody. So the That's final nice. place we eat in L.A., is this place so nice we had to bribe the guy to get in because Michael was wearing shorts. That's how uh, nice this place is. Geez. And we go in, and that's the night Lance Stewart decides to drink for some reason. Probably and so now we're not just paying for food, we're paying for alcohol. Oh, yeah. How much was and it? The, it? It was only, it was only like that's six, seven hundred. Oh, well, thank God. But yeah. it's still, that was way out of my League at the time. I'm, set, I'm setting and, you up so I can and get splurged at the real nice place. And I'm like looking at these. <laughs> I'm looking at these millionaires. I'm like, I can't believe you guys stuck me with this one. I mean, they're on purpose. But I'm sure they did. <laughs> probably. Uh, but you know, you know what they do for like hazing for like these professional soccer players over here in Europe? What they take the rookies, the guys that aren't making any money, and they take them like they, they like the whole team will go out and they'll just leave the kid with the check. <laughs> <laughs> That's so wrong. I know it's terrible. It, it probably like, uh, like probably eats like three of his checks. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like twenty four guys on a soccer team. We went, we went to this uh, abachi place in L A. with uh at the billionaires bash with Alki David, and Alki David was paying. But like I was a country boy out of his element. Like they handed me a menu, and the menu on the front had it printed two hundred and fifty dollars and up, and it's like Damn. you know, and the food sucked. Like the whole food sucked. Like I'd rather have like 
It's probably good. It's probably good for you. You know what? No, you it, no was, it was it was Japanese. It was like. literally a fried rice and like teriyaki chicken. And like they they if you ordered a Coke, they wouldn't give you like a fountain Coke. They would pour ice in a glass and pour like a bottle Coke in the ice, and they were eight dollars a piece. Mm. So every time you ordered a oh, refill, yum, eight bucks. You know, Damn. and then at the d- dessert was a fish flavored uh, sherbet ice cream. Fish flavored. Yeah, that sounds like you're right. I, I take that back. It was, <laughs> that sounds awful. terrible. And the bill, the bill was like four grand or something like that because he had took all of us out. Here's a ketchup flavored banana. <laughs> Give me that. <laughs> ketchup flavored. <laughs> Tom, Tommy, you're, you're over in Europe. What's the yeah. best food you've had, period, in life? What's like? What's the best movie? I, it's not in Europe. I and I, I think because I have a I probably I'm like my mother. I probably have this um, very slight uh, shelf. Although I've had the injections before, it hasn't killed me. So I I, I think that I have a very very slight shellfish um, allergy. Um, so the, the best food that I can think of is anything lobster mm. that like mm. blows my mind. I actually, Hot if I eat it, I, I well I actually feel a little high, right? Oh. So like yeah, you're supposed to tell. I forget the type of injection you get. You're supposed to tell the doctor if you have a shellfish allergy. I forget what it is. They they always ask you because if you take the shot and you have a shellfish, it kill you, right? I forget what I forget exactly what it was. Maybe it's a for sleep for uh, when they put you under or they give you something. I can't remember exactly what it was, but I always tell them that my mother has a shellfish allergy, and they do the test, and I never I never pop for it. But when I eat lobster. It's like the best high I can possibly. It's like mm, you're, it's you're also high, delicious. But you're, 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 you're high, but you're not. You know what I mean? And you're completely functional. So I have to say that lobster, and if that butter's made correctly, there's nothing better on, on earth. And it's not even that bad for you. Mm. Yeah, Jordy, the butter's probably the worst thing for you. Jordy, you're not a, a lobster fan. Is that what I'm getting? I don't eat seafood. I don't like the texture. I don't eat seafood. I, I hate that. It's not about texture. the texture. Who cares about the texture? It tastes. Great in yeah. nutshell. Nah, <laughs> it doesn't feel like pizza. <laughs> nah, the best food I've ever had was there's a place right here in Hemingway, South Carolina. It's called Scott, you know, it's called this thing doesn't do this. It's called Scott's this Barbecue. Isn't a rice, this isn't a rice crispy treat. <laughs> <laughs> Which I don't actually do sweets. Like I do soda. Soda's the, usually the biggest sweet I go for. Uh, and I'm like, oh, that's the nice can get. Nice yeah, steak. yeah. When I w- this is a great steak. Oh, this is gross. What I wouldn't do for a Slim Jim. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so what, um, what, what was the best meal you had? What you said, best, best food? Uh, there's a place here in Hemingway, South Carolina called Scott's Barbecue. You should look them up. They're world renowned. And uh, that oh. is the best food I've probably Barbecue. ever eaten. You're life. such a f- hillbilly. You know that? I'm not, I live I mean, in a flatland, motherfucker. You're a hillbilly. <laughs> oh man, uh, Connor, the throw up. Connor, throw up to Scott's Barbecue Place. Good God, I can't believe you ate there. You get tetanus w- driving by it. Oh, Dude, man. it is. Oh, old. is it, oh really? It, no, it's. Oh, old. so it is for hillbilly. So no, it is for it, like, it's old like school. Like it, there's, um, it's a family-owned organization. They they go and they cut like wo- uh, oak wood trees down to the the, uh, the fire the pigs up. They take these old truck axles and they have their own custom like barbecue grill and they slow roast these Yeehaw! pigs and they make their own custom barbecue <laughs> sauce pigs. and they don't take <laughs> debit cards. You got to pay cash. They don't take them. It's that it's that old school of that place. Like it's just you got to pay cash around here. We don't trust them plastic things. That's what those Yankees use. We don't do that here. So. They, they just don't. <laughs> like It's just an old school family <laughs> restaurant, but it is the best barbecue you've ever had in your life I, i've had some pretty good barbecue I, the, the stuff we had down in houston with Mc, uh kid by the camera did y'all see what we got down there you southerners I, are so weird with barbecues because i was in the army and there's tons of southerners in the army i knew this guy um he was from the panhandle in florida and um i guess i know that you guys probably don't consider that south but that's like i think it's probably the end the beginning of the end of the south he used to in the winter right he would get just like that chris rock uh, saturday night live thing in the winter go out and barbecue in the middle of the snow in Germany. He's like, gotta have his barbecue. I've never seen anything like it. Like he barbecues in the summer, not around, not in my house. <laughs> I I have a weird, I have like a weird food thing, uh, and it's really developed in the last seven years or so. But I have like, no, I think it's been your whole life. <laughs> <laughs> no, but no, this 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 particular, I like to eat the same thing over and over and over again. Now, and like it's never been like that. I used to have like a ton of variety. 
Uh, mm. But right now it's stir fry. We're making a lot of stir fry at home sometimes. Oh, I, I thought sometimes you were about to say Marco's pizza. pizza. No, man. You know, it's so funny because that was like back in the day when I was getting chewed up by Reddit. They'd be like, oh, Boogie ordered Marco pizza, Marco pizza. Dude, I'm a Papa John's guy if I'm anything. And then once oh, Domino's got awful. better, Domino's so good. But if I'm going to actually eat pizza, you know where I get it from. There's a place called Gusano's here in town. And it's, it's Chicago-style deep dish. And it's pricey. Dish, yeah. But, you know, I can't eat a lot of pizza. So I'd rather have good quality pizza. It's so yeah. I'm about to kill you. Oh, say some fat well, people going to take my fat yeah. call for me. But New York-style pizza sucks. Get the I love out of here. It. Yeah, I love it. Pizza oh, sucks. Yeah, yeah, no, nothing. No, I love it. I love it. You go, if you go, f I, God, down to like uh, South Jersey, the pizza sucks. And so you guys have no idea what it, ta what it tastes like. Yeah, my guess and is you you're talking. You can literally leave Manhattan. Dog, I've, I've ate 95. New York style the pizza in New York. You go, no, you oh, have. You, you yeah, ate. You what what have. you eat at Sabaros there? Did you eat at Sabaros? I believe him. I believe him because you don't know what pizza tastes like because you need that cardboard god in arkansas or south carolina or wherever the f they're from that pizza sucks sucks it's not even pizza you have no f grease balls down there no. how are you gonna get pizza anyway dude uh, chicago style pizza chicago is superior Boston. Chicago style good. is really good. superior but, but new york is still amazing no italians down there so you like you get some chinaman making your pizza get the f you don't know nothing about pizza, and I don't want to hear it. You know, they say it's a lot about New York water having something to do with it, but I would like that Chicago-style pizza with New York water. It's Let's not. I have something. a... Uh, I, I don't want to... I, I, I just don't like New York. It's, it's really thin. You're supposed to fold it. They don't have hardly thin. any sauce in it. No, then you got sh You got sh Absolute sh They have tons of sauce. It's sloppy as f I, I you, don't one, I, you don't know nothing. I wait, you don't know nothing. The pizza I got was right outside of the Met Stadium. Yeah, because it's crap. That's cr that's probably trash. That's probably trash. You shake yeah, Stadium. probably. probably. Yeah, that's probably trash. City field. Field. You gotta go. You gotta go to a, like. Look in, in in New York, New Jersey area. You have like local like local pizza shops, and I'll tell you exactly why. I have a cousin. I'm not gonna say who he is because he's semi famous. He went he went to the uh, culinary school, and uh, what he told he he studied food, and, and what he told is Italians cook local, right? So the ingredients they have, that's why deep dish is different than Boston is different than Manhattan, right? Or different than New York City, right? So all, all the ingredients. Now, pizza, the recipe is from Italy, right? But the ingredients are local, which makes it something completely different. I don't know if you've ever ha heard about pizza in, in Italy. It's like nothing, like it doesn't even match what we grew up with. Uh, no, what I grew right. up with, because you guys eat. I, it, here's, the, here's the rule. Up north, pizza's good. Down south, the Mexican food's good. You go up north, the Mexican food sucks. You go down south, the pizza sucks. You don't know anything about pizza. I trust me. I grew up 30 minutes from Manhattan. You guys don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Well, I, I believe you because, like, I wouldn't trust a New Yorker to cook my barbecue. <laughs> no, no, probably right there. He probably was smart. <laughs> no, no, so probably right there. No, no, because when I was in the army, all those guys like uh, you know, Billy Bob, he took care of the he took care of the barbecue or the black guys. They were really good at it. Too, yeah, that that that, that Bros barbecue yeah. is a, it's a it's a black family. Like, oh man, it's such a good yeah, barbecue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The guy I was talking, he's a black guy living next door. To can I, too, can, I, I mean, can I risk City. can I risk being racist for a minute? Sure. Please. I know you guys love it every time I do, right? You know, it's interesting that uh, I did a little bit of research when I was younger. I could be wrong. A lot of things I was taught and I learned when I was growing up younger, it turned out to be wrong. But uh, African-American people have been very good at food. And it's so weird that we associate fried chicken with black people or we associate watermelon with black people. So I looked into it. And the mm. reason we associate watermelon with black people in the United States is because once they were granted freedom... Um, one of the things they would do was grow crops and sell those crops as a way to survive. And they were pretty good at growing watermelon. And here's the thing. Black people do like watermelon, but everybody likes watermelon, right? So people would buy watermelon from human beings, right? And so uh, it, it was so common to see black people selling watermelon, which is this awesome cash crop that they could sell that everybody liked. Um, we began to associate black people not with eating it, mm. but by growing it and selling it. That was the connection. Oh. The other one That's an was amazing story, Boogie. I thought it was other, hereditary. No. <laughs> <laughs> the, the other thing was fried chicken became the uh, like a staple of you know slave culture because oh. we would give them their own chicken coops and that would be you would eat the eggs in the breakfast and sometimes you would eat the chickens as a treat and like that's how a lot of plantation owners maintained their slaves populations was by in giving all these them chicken years, coops, I right? just thought it tastes good 
Well, that's the thing. <laughs> it's so st- it's so <laughs> stupid that we associate these uh, delicious foods with an ethnic group. It's nonsensical. Oh, who cares? And so when I see uh, wings, like yeah, black people make good barbecue. Yeah, of course they do. Black people make good everything no, because they're southern <laughs> black people. Black people southern I grew black people up okay. with can't make. <laughs> I did have chit. A black person made me chitlins once, um, and I it never had is that. chitlins. Suck even it. though she, yeah, even though she was a very good cook, uh, even though she was very good at what she did, Ma Sally made me chitlins, and it was f- disgusting. Uh, the texture was oh, bad. Like the flavor chitlins. was bad. Texture. Everything What's was bad. What's the texture? I don't get the texture thing. Well, okay, chitlins are basically like. like the intestines of the pig, but like you, you split oh, it down gross. the middle, <laughs> and you and you cut it yeah, in sections, yeah, yeah. and like it smells oh, horrendous no when it's cooking. You boil oh, it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course oh. it is. Yeah. And you, like, eat, Tommy, you let eat me eat it with hot sauce. It's ridiculous. It's terrible. <laughs> you, Tommy, you might as well. <laughs> Tommy, let me let me explain the texture thing to you. Okay, you ever you ever eat a chicken leg? Yeah, of course. Do you like the meat of the chicken leg? Yeah. Do you like the gristle of a chicken leg? Yeah. What, you like to oh, eat the, the chewy knobs on the end, the gristles? Oh, no, it's gross. Oh, oh yeah. Because you're they, a texture they, guy. Because no, you're they, a they, texture they, guy. Taste, I don't... Okay, no, the no, no. The taste no, is they, pretty identical. Taste, if they taste... No, I don't think so. Yeah, it's pretty maybe, identical. Maybe, maybe you're right. I don't, I don't, I don't eat like dark meat. Yeah, I no, I don't. I, no, no. If it's a, I'm, I'm a fucking... I, 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 if, if I taste good, I'll eat it. So I'm not sure. Maybe you're right. I don't know. Texture, I like... Well, here's the real thing. Here's the real thing. you know, I wouldn't eat... I wouldn't eat sushi for years, though. You know, like for, because it just it looked it, it's such a stupid thing to do. Like it looked weird. So I did. I started dating this German girl who ended up marrying. What a mistake that was. Um, but uh, I I only ate it because I could tell she's like, "Do you want to go after sushi?" And I'm like, Ugh! like I like wretched, right? Yeah. Like oh my god. But I knew like because this is like ooh, all the hipster thing to do. She would think I was kind of a dork if I didn't go, or like, oh god, he's got a, he's hung up about uh, sushi. What a what a uptight American, you know. So I I suffered it, but I, I I suffered through it, but I ended up really liking it, and we have it usually like once a month now, you know. So the texture, the way it looked, turned me off. It looked like it because they, they they always used to say like um, it's it's raw fish, it's raw fish, it's raw fish. But isn't shrimp kind of like raw fish? There's, there's a lot of no, I guess that's not raw. I guess you have to cook that first. But that's when I realized it's just kind of like shrimp. It tastes yeah. great. I, I it's love delicious. sushi. Delicious, yeah. I'm sushi's I'm, amazing. I'm, 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 sushi's hey, look, look, we can talk about food for a thousand hours, but we are kind of a drama podcast, so we should sure. talk a little bit about drama. And I wanted to talk yeah. about roost, rooster teeth shutting down. Did you guys hear is about that this? Drama, really? I mean, like that's pretty. It much kind of is because of everything that surrounds it. I mean, rooster teeth. I gotta be honest. Didn't just shut I'm down because they got sh- boring. It's because of the abuse allegations, and that's drama to me. You know, in 2022, well, I, they had I, to, like... I, I want to say this is, like, the fifth time in the last five years, six years, that they have shut down over something I've heard about them shutting down. Yeah, well, they've had to shut down piece by piece by piece. Like, after this, the uh, the Roost podcast will continue. That's still going to happen. You guys <sighs> got to remember, like, this was the golden boy of, of YouTube. Like, they yeah. were... Uh, YouTube flew them everywhere. Bernie Burns, Ashley, all these people. Like, there's so many household names over at Rooster Teeth. And then that's when they found out there was some uh, really not great stuff going on behind the scenes. And I don't think like Bernie or any of those people were involved in it. It was like people lower down in the totem pole. Uh, but the, I think this is a company that got crushed by cancel culture. I think this is a company that got crushed by these abuse allegations and stuff. And it's kind of interesting because I've never looked that deep into it, but I've never seen like whenever there's like real proof, you know, like Blizzard style proof. Uh, it, it it's it's pretty much everywhere. It's never really been everywhere with ro- Rooster Teeth, but I I do know in 2022 they did make a statement of apology for like hateful and hurtful con conduct. But I'm curious, Tommy, what do you know about? I all don't that? believe any of these people. You know, <laughs> like I, I can't like like abuse. This is, this is like a new trend. Maybe because it's bullshit. Maybe somebody got yelled at. Go to work. I, I mean, I don't know the allegations either, and clearly you don't as well. But when I when I hear like young people talking about like toxic environments. And they, they explain it to me. It sounds like work. It sounds like working in a corporation. It sounds like, you know, you yelled at or it just, I, I, I yeah, just feel yeah, like it's yeah, a bunch like, of snowflakes a lot of yeah, times. Yeah, like with Blizzard. Now, now, I don't think anybody should be beaten. I don't think anybody, there's certainly a line to be drawn. But like right. like every time I hear one of these allegations and like, oh, wow, that's that's really crazy. And I look into it. And I don't know if that's the case here. I haven't looked into it. You right, didn't yeah. either. And you brought it no, up. No, right. Anyway, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. But every time I hear it, it's like, well, you know, um, I, I was uh, having a hard time at home and my boss uh, said that I had my thing in and I turned it in and he yelled at me and I'm like, really? 
<laughs> like I, I can't like I spent ten years getting yelled at. You know, like, I, I I don't I don't. I used to work. I used to work in the hyper building, and I had this boss. I don't know where he was from, but I'm going to do the accent anyway. So this is it can't be racist because I don't even know where he was from. But um, he would like call me into his office every once in a while, and he would remind me that Arkansas is a right to work state or right to fire state, I guess. Yeah. And so he would be like, hey, "Stephen, <laughs> were you late today?" I'm like, "Yeah, I was like three minutes late. I'm really sorry." I have the right to fire you. My and it's like I have the right <laughs> to fire you for any reason. You show up late, I fire you. You show up early, I fire you. By the way, I can he's fire Arab. you because I don't like your shirt. <laughs> I don't like the shirt you're wearing. Was he? I don't know. Maybe he was. Well, I, his name was Hafed. <laughs> and I, uh, <laughs> Give me that. <laughs> I'm See, and, uh, I would look at that motherfucker and be like, Hafed, you know when shit hits the fan, I have the right to quit too in that same directory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So shut the fuck yeah, up. Yeah. I just don't. Uh, <laughs> I just I would say to him all the time like, "Well, are you fire me or should I go to my desk?" And he's like, uh, "You uh, you go to your desk, but I could fire you later." I'm like, "All right, man, enjoy." <laughs> like clearly, this is getting you off to some degree to like have the ability to fire no, students who are for I student be, work. I got everything under control. These guys, they're very afraid of me. <laughs> <laughs> but I, but I mean, like it's you know, you gotta admit, Tommy. Sometimes it clearly crosses the line. Like you remember, I you did not like look at the look. Blizzard stuff, but the Blizzard stuff. What? You remember they were stealing their breast but, milk out of the refrigerator. Yeah, there was a Cosby like, room. Like, they were roofing people. Like, Girl, like, like herself during a work convention. Yeah, but, but, just know, and, and, and I never harassed. got any details. And, and and I also remember the Cosby room thing, right? Oh my, they got a Cosby room, so they they kind of try to play it off like they were joking around. Uh, about Bill Cosby, like uh, um, drugging girls, and it turns out the Cosby room existed long before anybody knew about the charges. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so, so, like to me, they threw the Cosby to, to get one more point. The girl that herself, you know, I, 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 I got to be honest, I don't know, I don't know anything that happened. All I know, is she herself. You know what? Etiquette did too. Keen gets blamed for it, even though he had a hypothetical conversation that had absolutely. But, but it would be pretty different to do it, with his. Show. It would be pretty you know? different if Etika did it at Keem's house, right? Like if yeah, you do I mean, it there, you got a blizzard I mean, work it'd be, convention. It'd be, it'd, be, it'd be different if he said, you know, uh, I had this conversation with Keemstar three months ago and it hurt my feelings. And by the way, bye. Yeah, I guess. But yeah, I mean, yeah. even that wouldn't have been Keem's fault because, you know, like, he, like you still got to be pretty f mentally ill. I've been abused by Keem too. You know, I mean, like, right. Like, right. Get the <laughs> All three of us have. <laughs> but I, but at the end of the day, I don't know. I I like the drama aspect of the show, but I do just like hanging out and bull with you guys. Absolutely. And I hope there's an audience that likes it. I've often said, and and guys, if you made it this far into it, I want to know your your comment about this. But we we've often about. said that maybe these set downs uh, go into members only for the people that want to pay for them. If you don't like them. You don't have to. You don't have to watch them, right? We will put them behind members only. I, I I can hear the the comments now. Boogie, you're a horrible person. So <laughs> I mean, that's just the, that's the average comments. That's just what the comments are. If, if, if this was a live well, don't worry. My blood pressure's gonna do it anyway. The blood pressure's gotta take it care of. Just get. If you want me to kill myself, just wait. I've already done it with cheeseburgers. Now we sure. just have to wait for the results. Yes. 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 Wouldn't it be funny if you got really healthy and that cancer took a turn for the worse. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that, that I have I have a friend that I follow, and it, it, it breaks my heart because when I first started to try to lose weight back in like 2011 or so, actually this was actually 2018. I'm sorry, I was going to get the weight loss surgery. This guy got so motivated, he was like 600 pounds. He lost everything. He's 165 pounds now. He's in great shape. He goes to the gym four times a week. And as soon as he got in shape, he went blind. Oh. oh. Like, well, do you know what happened to my producer? No. He was no. getting over it. He's a former high school football player. I guess things didn't go too good for him after. Or he, he wasn't, you know, th I guess things weren't happening, but he got really overweight. So he says, you know what? I know what to do. I've been in shape before. I'm going to run. I'm going to run my um, heart's content. And he got out. And he ran, and he got a blood cot, and they took his leg off. Mm. I just think it's so. <laughs> yeah, so I, he works with me now, Matt Pitt. Everybody, yeah, I, I just think it's <laughs> like, man, you beat you beat weight loss. Like to me, like losing weight, like massive amounts of weight, is one of the hardest things to do. It's right up there with like getting off crack cocaine, in my opinion. And How do you know? I, I, my brother is a crackhead. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, no. <laughs> but um and to do that to go from 600 pounds to like lose like two or three people of weight and then your ocular nerve so happens with it behind your eyes and you just go blind that has to suck ass yeah i, I guess 
Yeah. Like, just, yeah. just imagine that, though. But say you lost all the weight and you're good, you're running, you're like shaytards, right? Like, you're just having a great time. Right. Yeah. 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 And then triple bypass heart attack. That blood pressure caught up with you. I, I mean, that kind of thing happens. You know, there are fitness influencers that got hit by buses, y'all. I mean, it, it you know, it, it, the, the, here's the thing about life. You may criticize me and Jordy for what we've done, and you probably should. But at the end of the day, nobody's getting out of it alive. Not yeah. me, not Richard Simmons, not Why anybody else. Why put a else. pink lung in the ground, honestly, gentlemen? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, use yeah, it. Yeah, like, who cares? Like, if you, pressure, pressure, you, you haven't smoked early. enough. If you, you put a pink lung in the ground, it's like you haven't smoked enough cigarettes, you haven't had enough good food, you haven't lived. You feel like a virgin. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I would have I would have liked to have lived my life where, you know, like I had a, a higher quality of life, you know, like I've been a healthier person and enjoyed my life and done a lot of things in moderation. That'd be great. But if I die at 50, which, you know, is possible or I die at 70, it really ain't going to make that big of a difference. I've lived so much life and done so much stuff. I just wish it was higher quality. But the reality of it is starve yourself if you want to exercise every day, drink a lot of water. It still don't matter. You're going to be in the ground next to me except i'm just going to need a double wide plot that's the difference let's do it all right we're, we're about to end the podcast i say we both do our blood pressure again oh yeah one more blood pressure i, I think we should get a, a picture of us just all both three of us fat for the next uh thumbnail yeah see, i was fatter than we really are i, I would see i was seeing uh we should all get january sixes <laughs> like oh what? What? me what? you tommy and keem like when we get together and meet eventually we should all have like the Trump shoes on and like a <laughs> oh yeah and like a Beatles oh, photo. He named them January six. No, that's their nickname. The, the January oh, six. Is... <laughs> I was just saying he got real set of balls if we did that. That's You're so under the shit. belief that my lymphedema allows me to wear human shoes, Jordy. <laughs> it would do you wrap your legs or something? No, I do. I do wear compression tight, socks and stuff. Yeah, I do wear compression socks. Yeah, this thing's tight as hell. Because like my, oh, my yeah, daddy's like that, it, it scares the. F out. My daddy has lymphedemia, and like his legs are like the size of boulders. They're just full of fluid, and he has to like go to the doctor and have him professionally wrapped and. Shit. He only could wear like mine used to be. He only could wear like a certain type of sandal that he straps onto his feet. Oh God, mine's so high it it errored out. Uh, yeah, I wear I have lymphedema. I have to wear compression socks. And mine used to look like your dad's. I used to have to wear like giant oversized slippers, like clown shoes, just to be able to walk around and stuff. Um, but after I got the bypass surgery, uh, I was able to get it all like taken care of, and they're pretty healthy and they still, look pretty good my, right now. My right they're leg still does discolored it from, as hell. Still at one eighty three, even though I took the medicine. The, the top, the top of my right foot does it every now and then, like wants to like swell up a little bit. And I'm like, every time I see it, I'm like, diet time. We're going for walks. I'm like, I'm yeah. not that yeah. old yet. By the way, I, I just want to end the podcast on this. You guys know, I I, I don't know if you, I have a YouTube buddy I was in the army with uh, called Dead on Dave. He actually lost all his weight. He was 500 pounds, and he lost it all through Pokemon Go and eating right. And now he's uh, he weighs less than I do. Amazing. So you guys are full of shit, and you could do something. Stop being such fat. Stop being fat. Mm, stop being fat. That simple. Stop I will tell fat. you. I, I've, I I still can't afford Zimpic and all this other stuff. 167 over 99. So probably not a good place to be right now. I need to go take my pill. You're I will say I, I do have me. a plan in March. At the end of March, I go. I'm not going to talk about what it is, but I do have a plan for uh, this summer. And, uh, you know, as much as I would like to be able to get on a Zimpic or Zimbound or one of these other drugs, I've literally begged everybody I know to help me afford it. And they can't or they won't. And that's okay. I'm going to have to do it on my own, and I respect that. I get that. However, I have a plan, and I'm hoping to see some really solid results this summer. Maybe it'll work. Maybe it won't, and I'll, I'll tell you what it is. Super. Uh, I'm a little nervous about it, but once I'm off probation, I can finally go out to Colorado and pick up some over-the-counter mushrooms that I know people I've spoken with who've cured their alcoholism. By microdosing sure. shrooms and combining you bring them with therapy. At home with you right. and have them live now, in your house right now, it probably back. won't help. But hey, guess what? At least I'll be eating some sweet, delicious chocolate with some mushrooms in it. So it probably shouldn't be that big. <laughs> I also believe should be a good time. Should be a good time. Hundred grand to give you. All right, everybody. That's all we got for you today on Local <laughs> Live from Boogie Two Nine Eighty Eight Two Wings of Redemption. I'm Tommy C. Signing off. I promise you guys, I'll try to die by the next episode.